Welcome to another episode on Common Room's YouTube channel. I'm Rama Agsunod of Common Room PH and today we're going to be discussing how to seal projects. Disclaimer, the tips that I'm going to share with you today will not be about getting clients. We're going to be dealing mostly with sealing projects, meaning the clients already reached out to you. Honestly, I'm a really shy person and I don't actively look for clients because that's not my strength. I don't usually do cold emails. Probably for another episode, we'll look for an expert who can talk about tips on how to get clients. But for this video, mostly we'll be dealing with warm clients already. So what does warm client mean? When we talk about warm clients, they are already clients who reach out to you. They probably know you already and are already considering you for the project. They are already 30 to 50% convinced that you are the person for the project. So our video for today will be talking about warm clients and how to increase your chances from getting that project. The tips that I'm going to share with you today is of course based on my experience. I've been handling different custom services for Pop Junk Club since 2007. I've handled a lot of clients as well and partnerships and collaborations under Common Room PH since 2015. So we've collaborated with DTI, Go Local. We've also collaborated with Rustan. So basically the tips I'm going to share with you today are tips that I've learned along the way. Of course, there are different ways on how to seal projects. If you have other tips that you think can help the community, feel free to leave your suggestions below. I'll be happy. To read and learn from you. Okay, so let's start! During the pandemic, of course, a lot of creatives, a lot of small businesses lost a lot of opportunities, right? A lot of our products and services are deemed non-essential, debatable, non-essential. Of course, we can feel down about it, but but the pandemic also opened up other opportunities. There will be new needs also for the new normal. So in the case of Pop Junk Love, a client reached out to us and shared that their constituents lost their jobs during the pandemic. So they wanted to provide a workshop for their constituents wherein hopefully after the workshop, they'll be able to use the skills that they've learned to start their own businesses, new needs during the new normal. So that brings us to tip number one. Always make sure that your social media pages and your online bios indicate your or show the products and services that you can provide for the clients. The project with this client, they probably saw our page. They are new clients, by the way, but they're warm clients because they are the ones that contacted us. So they probably saw our feed already and they saw that we were providing workshops and we were doing custom plushies. We are using felt and different kinds of materials. So that's why they thought that we can be the partner for the project. That's why even if you think that your service or your product is a non-essential, there is always a reason why you still post your work, you share your work, you show up for your work even during this tough times, even if clients are not coming in, etc. Because we never know who you're going to attract. You never know who's going to see your post. And if you don't post, of course, you won't be seen in the explore, you won't be seen in the feed of other people. Does your page already indicate the services that you can provide for them other than what they see in your photos? Does your recent photos on your feed show the different services that you can provide for a client? If they see your services and the other types of projects that you can do, then you increase your chances of getting that email, right? Okay, for our next tip, when you get that email, the first two weeks is the most critical period of sealing a project. You have to take advantage of that momentum, that excitement that made them email you. My second tip is that even if you don't have clients yet, doesn't mean you don't prepare for your base rates or your minimum rates for certain projects. You should already have terms 
when you're dealing with clients. I know a lot of creatives who don't have this read cards yet, a standard contract for clients. So those are the things that somehow you should already have when that client emails you. You don't have to wait for the client to contact you before you prepare all of these things. Of course, when we're dealing with clients, we are talking about different kinds of projects with different kinds of inclusions, right? But if you have a rate card ready, you have a catalog of services ready, when you have a standard contract ready with your terms as an artist, etc., then it would be easier for you to tweak the details of these rates based on the client. We have to take advantage of the fact that they're still excited to meet you and hear what you can do for them as an artist. Another tip for me is that when you're making your quotation, you have to use keywords from the client's email and use it for your quotation. I don't know if that's a tip, but that's how I do it. Because again, the client reached out to you because they have a need. And it would be reassuring for the client to see that you are on the same page. And how do you assure that, especially now that we're just transacting through emails, right? For example, in Pop Junk Love, they wanted us to do a felt plush making workshop for their constituents. In our quotation, for instance, instead of just saying workshop, because a workshop can be any workshop, right? It can be an informal art tambay, etc. But instead of just saying it's a workshop, I termed it as a livelihood workshop because really, it's not just a workshop where I teach them how to do felt plush dolls, but actually how to start a business with the skill that they have on felt plush making. That's one trick. Another, for example, instead of just saying it includes a kit, it includes a business kit. So what does a business kit mean? It means that even after the workshop, they have a lot of other materials that they can use to start their own businesses. Those are the keywords or those are the things that can help you bag that client because you're actually answering their need. They don't just want a workshop, they want a skill that the constituents can actually do in their own homes after the workshop so they can start their own businesses. So it's important that when you pitch a project to them and when you give a quotation of your services, somehow you use these words to assure the client that you are on the same page as to the objective of the project. Now that you have somehow given them a quotation and they like the way you pitch your idea and they like the quotation that you sent them, the next stage is contract signing, right? In the contract signing, it's really important to under-promise so that you can over-deliver. Of course, you want to impress a client, right? That's why you impress them to land the project. But don't impress beyond the realistic capability of you and your brand. Don't offer them something that you really can't deliver. Because while it can impress the client, somehow you may lose them as a client in the future if you won't be able to deliver to those promises. You should always be realistic when you're giving those deliverables that will be included in your contract with the client. Another thing that's really important also in your contract with the client is, of course, the lead time. It's very important that you know how long it takes you to finish a project. Remember that if it takes you a month to deliver all of these services, your contract should reflect that. Another mistake that a lot of creatives do is that they also overpromise in terms of lead times because they really want to land the project. They are willing to accommodate all of the requests of the clients to the point that they won't be able to deliver. I think it's a smaller loss for you if you lose the client today because you can't meet their impossible demands than lose them permanently because you got them today but you weren't able to deliver on the promises that you said you would in the contract. You didn't totally lose the client and they can still be a potential client in the future if you are just honest to them as to how or what you can deliver for the project. Another tip for me is that 
now that the terms for the contract is finished, let's say the deliverables and the lead time for the project, start only when you have a contract. I know a lot of creatives sometimes start working for the project even before the contract is signed because the client is already telling you that the contract is in the end is in the signing stage already you can only start so that we can meet the deadline etc for me i don't really do that i really start work only if i have a contract with me so it protects you as an artist and also protects your future collaboration with that client because of course let's say the project didn't push through and you already did the work for that client and then somehow they didn't manage to push through with the contracts that happens guys that happened you already did the work and the contract or the project didn't push through for some unknown reason somehow the relationship is strained already so you didn't just lose the project now you will probably lose that client in the future because you probably don't want to work with them already just to protect that relationship and protect you also as an artist and it also helps because it expedites contract signing why because usually a project has a deadline right and if they know that you won't start working unless the contract is signed and that you have a certain lead time then it gives them more reason or motivation to finish that contract because again they're not just trying to meet your deadline they're trying to meet their deadline for the project okay so now you have a contract what's next now it's time to shine meaning it's now time to over deliver why is it important to over deliver happy clients are repeat clients they are always warm clients so if they are happy it's likely that they will tap you in future projects if you're like me who who's shy and don't like to actively look for clients for projects to go around that weakness i over deliver since i already have the client now if they're happy they'll probably be future clients who i don't have to actively seek in the future because we will always be a part of their roster of brands that they would like to work again in the future because again we over delivered for the project that we had with them in the past. The case of Pop Junk Love with this project during the quarantine, I didn't just teach any pattern for a felt plush making workshop. I actually made custom patterns for the client that's very reflective of the city or of the province. For the kits, for instance, I really gave them a lot of inclusions in the kit because again, I really wanted them to start their own business after the workshop. So the workshop was supposedly just for felt plush making, but I also taught them how to make keychains and magnets. So those are the things that are bonus inclusions in the workshop because I know coming from a business point of view i really know that those trinkets and knickknacks are very good as souvenirs that's why instead of just teaching their constituents how to make dolls i also taught them how to make keychains and how to make magnets etc and those are included in the kits another over delivery on our part is i only promised one training for their facilitators but i actually gave them two trainings because we weren't able to finish our training for the first session so i accommodated and continued the training for another day so those are the things that you can do on top of the promised deliverables in your contract to make the clients happy happy clients are potential repeat clients in the future so there i hope you learn from today's episode on how to seal clients and how to land projects again there are things that you can already do today even if you don't have clients yet are your rate cards ready are your catalog of services ready are your terms ready do you have a standard contract already 
Um, do you post regularly on your feed? Those are the things that you can already do today even if you don't have clients yet so that when they do contact you, you already have those information on hand to take advantage of that first email when they're very much interested to tap you in their project. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you like the video. If you do, please like. If you have suggestions, please leave a comment. And there, thank you for joining me today and please subscribe to our channel. Thanks guys!